this is what I'm painting. But we're going to do the uh, four foot version, and um, and we're going to do the four foot version as a class at the studio. So um, if you want to do it in person, I do have a class on the calendar for the second week of May. You're going to be able to sign up for that. And um, also, I'm going to offer a tracer for this. I'm sorry, I'm a little clunky moving around in here. Just trying to get everything organized so I could do this. I've got this big piece of wood. I'm trying to make sure I can show you. And um, I, um, anyway, I was planning on coming on at 7, but I had a little delay. And Facebook won't let you um, do an instant one through StreamYard, which is what I'm using. So I had to schedule it in advance. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this. I'm painting the same exact design on that on here, um, just a little smaller. I have not done the four foot size yet. So this is just a little tester. So it's probably going to be a little clunky, but that's OK. Um, so anyway, um, this is what I'm painting this on. I'm going to turn the camera down when I'm painting. This is um, 10 by 48, I guess. Um, I'm assuming it's four foot, it's bigger than three foot, and it's not five foot because I'm five foot. So. It's four foot. Anyway, um, and so I went ahead and pre painted it black. As you see on the sample back here, the background's black. So even in the class, I'm going to go ahead and paint it black, and then we'll just do a light wash of black with the black paint we're going to be using in the class. That way, if you have to do any touch-ups, you'll be using the same color black. Um, and if you miss any part of this, you can start over at the beginning and, you know, watch it after it, um, it's already recorded, which is what most people do. So um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, and okay. So, um, like I said, this is going to be a little clunky because I have a lot of tech in the background. I'm doing this by myself. I haven't done it like this before. So um, if you ask a question and I miss it, I do apologize. But I left my iPad at home, which is normally what I prop up so I can see comments. And my laptop is a little ways away and I'm kind of blinded by the uh, ring light that's in my face. So um, and I can't see it that far. And when I move it closer, I get feedback. So, um, and I'll figure all that out for the next time. I just apologize. But anyway, um, I kind of like jumped the gun and kind of wanted to get this live to everybody. So my plan is to start doing more lives and um, and paint things live. And, um, and then we'll have some, even have some live classes. So for this, you're just going to be watching me paint and we're just going to be talking and, um, and let's get started. So the first thing I painted before was the leaves. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, the colors I'm using are, um, I just, I have mostly um, plaid brand paints. So I have these folk art paints. And so I'm using some vibrant green. This is lime green that I'm going to be using. And I have this Sargent acrylic. I don't even know really where I got this. I might have picked this up at the dollar store. I don't really remember. Um, and they also had some vibrant. But I'm going to tell you, the um, wood soaks up paint. So these kind that you get at, um, this one's actually, Sargent, I didn't get at the dollar store. This rich art, I think, is dollar store paint. Now, the cheaper the paint, the cheaper the paint. Okay, so this has got, um, a lot less pigment in it. So sometimes you have to do more coats with it. That's the thing with uh, craft paint too, that it's it's kind of watered down. So if we were using fine art paint, you know, it's nice and thick and you pay for that. So, you know, we're gonna use craft paint, so we may need to do two coats of the color. Um, the pinks I'm using, I learned from this one, that my flamingo and my hibiscus are the same color, obviously. So this time I wanted to do a little bit brighter pink in the hibiscus, and I'm not even put a little red in it. So I'm adding this folk art pink rose color to the mix. 
And I have a pale pink, which is a uh, tickled pink folk art. And I have this little coralish, coralish color. Um, it's called Pink Melon. I don't know how I'm reading this because I'm really, my, my vision's so messed up from looking in this light that I can barely see anything. But, um, and I have a little bit of this bright pink that I used before, but it wasn't quite bright enough for me. And you can tell from the, on the top, you know, how bright it's going to be. And compare that to, what was the bright one I picked up? This one. They do look almost exactly alike, don't they? But the, this one's a little bit more intense. They may not look like it on there, but it does to me. So we will see. But looking at them through the bottle, they look exactly the same. So anyway, I probably just didn't put it enough um, of the intense color because of the way I mix my paint up. So anyway, okay, I'm going to turn the camera down so you can look at this. And I'll just be rambling on while you watch me paint. So let's see. I wish I really wish I would have brought my my iPad. My husband's not at home, so I can't call him to bring it to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to I was trying to read this, see if I had any uh, comments there. Okay, so I'm gonna paint the um, the leaf first. So let's put this down so you can see it. Because I'm gonna put a leaf at the top, and then a leaf farther down in the middle, and then one at the bottom. And then I like to be um, symmetrical with my artwork, so it's kind of like different on this. But you also don't want to do um, even numbers of things. So I'm going to do three leaves. And then you would think I would want to do three hibiscus. But I'm only going to do two hibiscus. And then I'm going to do, that will give me space for two flamingos. So I'll end up doing four pink things. And then I noticed when I paint the lettering in white that it did help to go around the edge of it with black. And I'm not even that neat of a painter because, you know, this is artwork. It's not graphic design. And so people tend to want to have that really sharp edge. I, you know, I don't want to have like brush strokes everywhere and it's looking messy. But I do want to keep it in the back of my mind that this is art. This is not vinyl. If I wanted it perfect, I could have cut vinyl out, right? That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I just have a paper plate here that I'm using to mix my colors. I have a one inch flat brush. And then I have a bunch of my old ratty brushes. So, um, and I have one little liner brush. And this is actually what I use. Look how ratty these are. I mean, I keep brushes forever. I probably should not, but you know, I still have a bag of oil painting brushes from college. So. But anyway, this is what I use to outline the, the lettering. So the wider the brush, the more paint you're going to get on the surface at one time. So the way that this, this um, leaf is, is it goes a big curve down, and then it goes straight down, and then up like that. Like a, it's a big banana plant. And if I needed inspiration, I could just go outside the studio because I have a bunch of banana plants growing out there. So over on this, I'm going to goes up like that, down, up. And I do have a tracer that you can get, which is another reason. I was having an issue because I could not get it loaded. So just come back a little bit later and I'll put it in the, I'll edit the description of this. 
And I will say, this is a nice piece of wood that I bought at Lowe's, and you know, wood's not cheap. So if you don't like the price of the painting class, it's blame it on the wood. But um, the first one over here, I painted on planks. So I sanded it down really good. And I will tell you, it ate paint up. So this is just going on so beautifully. I might change my attitude now. And so what I do is I am a messy painter. My palettes look horrible. And I just, I just instead of taking a little of this and a little of this and mixing that color and using the paintbrush, I just put my brush. You see what my brush looks like. It's got two colors on it. So that's how I paint. And I just let it blend on the, um, on the surface. And if one side needs a little more one color, I just dab it in there. This one inch brush is just amazing. I love it. I'd say it's my new favorite brush, but I'll be honest with you, I just got it today. So. Bright green. It's just, it's just such a happy color. As a matter of fact, my old studio, we had I had one of the walls painted this green color. I um I've already got paint on myself, see? I um wanted it these big happy colors. And um so I painted the walls yellow and I painted one wall across the back this bright green color, this lime green color. And it was so happy looking. My husband said, once you get in here and put your personality in here, you'll really like it because the space was like white walls. And it was the first, um, I was the first person in that space after hit, after a fire and they had renovated it all. And um, so it was very plain office looking. And um, we went and looked at it. And I was like, I just can't picture myself in this space. And my husband says, well, once you put your personality in here. And I said, oh, Lord, no, I'm not putting my personality. I'm going to put like a 13-year-old girl's personality. Because, you know, artists sometimes have strange personalities. Okay, so the second one's going to go down. And one thing I like about these brushes, like a brush like this, a flat brush, is you can use the edge of this brush to be your edge. So a lot of people I will see, they try to paint a straight edge and they hold the brush right up down like this. And, and they'll, they'll go hold it like this to get that straight edge. And, and like this, when all you have to do is really let the edge of the brush paint it for you. I got, I got paint on me and paint on the, in the wrong spot already. Already, even hasn't hardly even started. And I just noticed that I'm just telling y'all not to paint with the brush upright. I just did it myself. Well, hey, rules are made to be broken. Okay, doke. So. I love banana plants. I just think they're so happy. The house I grew up in had banana plants and my studio outside has banana plants. My husband hates them for some reason. And now he's having to mow the lawn at the studio so he can't get away from banana plants. And do they make bananas? Yes, they make little baby tiny bananas that you can't do anything with. I've sanded this pretty good and it is so such a smooth surface to paint on. I might have to just go ahead and move, move to doing all these instead of the planks. I was trying to save money for people doing the planks, but and this is just so nice.
So I have the class coming up in May. I think it's May 14th. If you check my calendar online, I think it's May 14th. Um, and um, I think I'm only going to be able to fit about six people in here with these big old planks. So um, we've got the um, Hot Art Cool Nights coming up this weekend. So if you're out and about in Baton Rouge, come on by. We're going to have a band playing outside. We're going to have a couple of vendors. I think some students from art students from BRCC are going to come by. I mean, we're going to have, um, I'll be setting up outside. And um, so that'll be fun. <laughs> anyway, look how pretty this is looking. Show you. Looking good. I'm going to put one more at the bottom. And then I'll give me space to put some hibiscus. And then I'll have to put the um, flamingo. Maybe I'll make this one smaller at the bottom so I have to make sure I have some space for my flamingos. I'm kind of going crazy with these up. Off with these leaves. So I'm just going to do a small one right here. So I wish I could see if people are talking to me or so I can engage in a conversation with y'all. I really need my iPad. Or maybe I can move my laptop closer. Maybe I'll do that in a second as I'm letting this dry a little. A little bit more yellow. Okay, close enough. I'm going to move this right out of the way. It's plugged in, but I really do not need it because I turned on my bigger light in the corner. Get this out of the way. Under my feet, under my hands. And. So this is going to be, look at this little tracer you can get. So that's, you could just trace your um, flamingo on. I'm going to show you how easy it is to paint your own flamingo without using the tracer in just a second. So is everybody hearing me okay? I see I have a few people on here. Um, can y'all hear me okay? Okay. I got my heat gun here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna paint um, kind of away from the not on top of this, so I'm just going to let this dry by itself for a little bit, and um, and then I'll start painting the hibiscus plants. So, get my little chair going, sit down. Okay, so um, I'm going to paint hibiscus. 
I cannot grow a hibiscus to save my life. I am a very bad plant owner. I'm, I just cannot. Oh, thank you, Kim. I cannot um, grow anything but, but begonias. That's the one plant I can grow is a begonia. Um, and I inherited some of my mom's begonias, everything else I killed. When my mom died about six years ago, I inherited some of her begonias and I've actually managed to keep them alive. They are about three feet tall because I babied them all through Christmas, all through winter, I mean. Okay, so the hibiscus plant is uh, very stylized. If you remember seeing in the picture behind us, um, you can see in this painted version, how stylized it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double dip. See how I've brushed, I have the colors right here. So I'm gonna load my brush in between them. So I'm getting those two colors on there. And they're gonna mix together on their own on the brush. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna do, can y'all see this good? So I'm gonna make a big, Sweeping circle or well, semicircle. I think I have too much water still in my brush for when I clean it off. And then I'm going to leave a little bit right here. And that one I kind of messed up on. That's why, That's why I painted black so I can touch it up. There you go, big old leaf like this. See that swooping action? One thing I forgot to add is a little white on my palette. I did like to come back with a little white right here. White is one of those colors that seems to um, be thicker than the other colors. And so it's good for when you are painting and you can kind of see the design underneath, the black underneath peek through. Not that this is a primer or a gesso. It just seems to help. It's very messy. On it. Oh, well, I touched up a lot when I did that one. I mean, come on, even Michelangelo had to go back and touch up stuff. I'm guessing. And notice I'm still painting with this big fat brush. Let's see. That's almost dry. Let me just watch your ears, everyone. I'm going to put a little. in action so um i will like i said i will post the uh, link where you can get the tracer and um and it's going to have the tracer for the design the flowers and everything and the lettering and so when you trace the lettering on you know you definitely want to have your painting dry but um it um you can use either graphite paper or um, a lot of people say carbon paper but carbon paper to me is that ink that used to, that ink paper that was between your checks and your checkbook but um I always call it graphite paper so it's graphite paper or um, and there's some black graphite paper and then there's or there's graphite colored graphite paper. And there's also a white graphite paper, which I'm going to try that tonight. I ordered some off of Amazon the other day, and it came in. And um, I think that will be cool. And so I'll probably come back with my 
smaller brushes and touch this up after it dries up because it's you can kind of see through it. Again, that's just because it's a craft paint, not fine art paint, right? Okay, so we got one hibiscus here. I'm gonna slide this down some, so that means I'll put a flamingo here. I'll put another hibiscus here. Let's see, should I put it? I'll put another hibiscus, hibiscus here going off the side and I could put the flamingo, let's see, where could it, let's should I put the hibiscus, flamingo's tall, so the flamingo should go here and then the flamingo over here will go here, kind of come over like this. So I'll put the other one right here. Just thinking out loud. Okay, so I'm gonna have it kind of go off the, off the page. That'll be kind of cool because then the flamingo Let's see. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. I was planning on having half of this, like, you know, I the, all the leaves painted but one, everything, the hibiscus all painted but one. I could do that and save time, but. My day job, I was working well after five, working on stuff. So I kind of ate up, planning on coming over here at six, and I did not get here till six forty. And I was planning on going live at seven. Getting the theater. Oop, let me dry that off. I mean, good lordy. Um, I know plaid has some higher quality paint too. I probably should have got some of that. That would have been nice. Oh, I'm gonna put a paint on the table. Paint. I'm just being a klutz today. Okay, flamingo's gonna be over here anyway. Okay, okay. Now, see, I'm going to have to cover that little piece of that leaf because this is supposed to be like the stamen part of the um, of everything. I hope you can see that. Is the lighting too much? Is it too much of a glare over here? I mean, I, I can't see squat because I feel like it's right in my face, these lights. Let's see. I'm not noticing anything different. There's a slight delay on the camera I'm looking at, so I can't tell if, um, because this is very bright pink, as you can see, and it looks kind of watered down on the video, but I can't help it. Let's see. Here. So, so white if you haven't been to the um, hot art cool nights it's really fun it uh, goes all the way down government street and about two blocks down um, jefferson highway so if you haven't been to that yet i do recommend going the weather is going to be well it's supposed to rain that afternoon mm -hmm. But it will um, be, somebody's got a motorcycle outside. Um, but it should have passed by the time that, um, that it starts. And, uh, it. And, um, and the cool thing is, is right over here by me, there's parking. 
So if y'all, you know, a lot of people don't like to go because it's, you know, it's kind of hard to find parking space. But right over here by me, there's parking spaces. There's a um, hair salon that I don't know. They may have, they may have something going on. I mean, they may have um, set up for white light night. They usually don't, but they may. And um, there's a shopping center behind the shopping center next door. There's space. So there's a couple spaces. Okay. So now I've got my two. This one's hanging off of the page. I mean, the sign. And this one is right there. I got to touch up that little circle because I went paying attention. And now I'm going to draw like the stamen part. Well, let me clean up this edge right here. Hold on one second. Let me clean that sticker up. Find me a good brush. And clean up this edge. There we go. This edge. Okay. And this is, I'm just letting the brush do the work to help me get a smooth edge. I do really load my brush up with paint. And do I need any touching up over here? I'll touch up a little over here. Here. I'm going to pour this hot pink down. And this is the um, pink rose. It's awfully bright to be called pink rose. But anyway, so there's um, there's parking over here. The bar, there's a bar right behind me. It's going to be open. Um, and later that evening, I think they have a band. We're going to have a band in the front yard. It's my husband's band. Um, so if you're here around in the 80s, it's the gutter sharks. They're going to be playing in the front yard outside. We've got a couple of vendors outside. And if you come inside, we're going to be doing, um, you're going to be able to do some sublimation if you want. So um, I'm thinking of it as like Mother's Day gifts, but we have like little keychains that you do. And the price is going to be like three to 10 bucks for the different things. So I'm going to have a, um, I'm going to have a koozie you can make and they're all going to be handmade sublimation, which means that you are going to be, it's not something that's printed out. You're going to be hand drawing what you're sublimating. So you could write your name or what have you on it. Um, you could write all of the, you know, your siblings names and give it to your mom for mother's day or grandmother or what have you. Um, Keychains. What else did I get? Oh, I think I got some, um, I got bags just showing up at my front door from Amazon. Um, I think I've got some um, earrings that you can supplement. Those will be really cute. Okay, so now we're going to paint the flamingo. So um, I think my flamingo up here is going to be on top of the green. You can't really see it. but So here's what I got so far. Here's the top. This is the top, all the way to the bottom. Of course, I could make this the top. I can do it whichever I want, but I was just thinking of this piece of the top one. Um, ah, yeah, now, now, I'm, now I'm thinking a little different. Hold on a second. Let me think about this. I think I might do that. Let's see. I think I'm going to do that. I think now this is my top. And then I can put a flamingo, one flamingo here, and one flamingo here at the bottom. Because the one at the bottom always seems a little smaller. I don't know if it really is, but it just in my head it seems a little smaller. Okay, so my flamingo here is going to be, let's see. I'm going to do it this way. Head. Okay, so if you think about a flamingo, let me do the bottom one first because it's going to be going the other direction. 
So um, a flamingo has that long neck and the body kind of looks like a little fat egg-shaped body. So this is the way I think about it. And I'm going to add a little bit coral in this. It's not really coral, but it looks kind of coral. What did I say the name of it was? This is pink melon. So it's got a little bit different color than the hibiscus. So, um, I, you know, one time I think I'm going to do like a lavender hibiscus. But anyway, okay, I digress. So for this, what you're going to do, let's see if I can get an angle to show you. Kind of a cool little trick for paint flamingos or drawing flamingos. Okay, so it's kind of an S, okay? So if you think about it, here's where the head's going to start. Can I, are y'all seeing that pretty good? Okay, ready? So here's, okay, so here's the head. Wait, let's see, let's go over here. Here's the head. Make it an S. But it's like an S that's leaning sideways. Okay, so that's a big S. Well, it looks backwards on that, but it's an S. <laughs> Then what you're going to do is you're going to come back, and this is going to be the head, so I'm not going to deal with that right now. I'm going to clean this little edge up right here. Okay. So now as the neck comes down, you're going to stop here, and you're going to make the back. Look at that. Already starting to look like a flamingo. Goodness. Already starting to look like a flamingo. So it's like an S, but it's not an upright S. It's like the S that's falling forward. So it's at an angle. You see that now? The S, it's like it's tilted. It's an italic S. There you go. It's an italic S. And so then you come back here, and that's going to be part of the tail. And so just going to paint in some tail feathers, some happy tail feathers. I'm going to fill in the inside, and I'm just going to dab my paint in the different colors of pink here. I'll put a little more white at the top. Just for some accent. And the thing that's really cool is that when you come back, because I came back on that big one, you look at it again, and drag it over here. Before I can kill myself. Okay. You see the flamingo here? You see how I went back in with black around the edges and just kind of like, as one of my friends says, loved it up some. Just kind of like made it more whimsical. That really is what puts the light. Okay, I'm really digging painting on this um, type of wood. So, let me get, I need a fatter brush than that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, got me another brush. This is a round 12. Actually, I got these in a pack of teacher paints, a uh, teacher brushes, like, well, a student pack, I guess, because it was like for something that was teaching. So there was like, you know, six of this style, six of another. So that's what I've been using at the studio for a lot of painting classes. Okay. Some more. I really hadn't used that much paint on that the plank one. It just ate paint. Ate paint like it had never eaten in a long time. It had never eaten in a long time. That doesn't even make any sense what I just said. Okay. So I need to make a big old round head. Back flamingo. 
This is one of those flamingos at the reserve in Florida that everybody feeds. So she's a little chunky. I understand, Flamingo. Okie dokie. So I can also do this just as a painting. You could just do a Flamingo in class, which would be fun. Um, I'm thinking about how I have my resin and G, uh, resin and um, glass shard class that maybe I could just do a painting in glass shard. That might be fun too. Okay, so I'm going to put the legs on the flamingo. And so how a flamingo's legs go is not how I, other animals go. So their joints kind of, I guess, kind of are wonky <laughs> and you can um and they bend their knee backwards so that's what we're gonna do bend its knee backwards so I just think of it as a four okay so we're making a four so it's gonna go off of the board here so it's going to be some stuff around Let's see Okay, so I'm going to make a four. So I'm going to come out this way, joint, leg this way. So it's going to go this way. That joint right here. And then this way. And I'm going to come back with my smaller brush to do the, the feet. And then this one will go down, joint. Okay, that simple. It's a four. I said that to somebody who just was looking, who were looking at pictures of flamingos or somewhere. We're in a store, I think it was. I, was. I made the comment. Isn't it funny how flamingos' legs are four, are four, make a four? They said, I've never noticed that. To me, that's all I see. Every time I see a flamingo, I'm like four. My address at home is four ten, <laughs> and I'm like, I could do a flamingos four. One's on one leg, you know, or both legs are right next to each other, so it looks like the one. And the zero, I don't know. Maybe that one's just sitting down, and the zero would be her fat body. But, so for the feet, what I do is I take my small liner brush, and then I come back with the black anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I do little toes hanging off and that little I don't know what it is it's like a dew claw a uh, dog has a dew claw it's a uh, flamingo dew claw I guess okay so now I gotta do the feet now these beaks and this little sketch I have are pretty chunky big old beaks but you know how they curve at the end and I don't know why but I always think they're gonna it should look like a toucans but it doesn't so it comes out and then it curves. And then I'm really going to get the life in it when I um, come back with black on top of it. So this is a really fat flamingo, I've got to tell you. I feel very bad for this flamingo. But that's okay. When we come back and put in the accent colors, she will look beautiful. Okay, so that's my one flamingo. This is the one that you did the S. Now, when I do the other one, she's going to be facing the other direction. I don't know why I think flamingos are all female. But when I do the other one, I'm going to be doing a reverse S. But I want to do this one first just so you can see what I mean when I say an S. So I'm going to do the second one right here. And so this one's body was this way. This one's going to go like this okay so go ahead and load up my other brush and get ready to rumble okay so I want the body this way so I'm going to 
Is that better? You can see a little better? I can't see. Okay. Good. Nick. And I'm twisting the brush as I go. That's how I'm getting it to be fat and thin. It's really getting that easy to do, but go up to the body. And I really didn't make this as big as I wanted to make her, so I'll come back and add a little more. Add a little more. There we go. Now that's where that coral color is looking really pretty. Here. And it's so sad that we're going to paint lettering all on top of our windows. So cute. Okay. So let's see how long are we into this? Eight twelve. Ooh, almost almost an hour now. So let me go ahead and I'm going to come back with this other brush and I'm going to clean up some edges if I can. I think I got too much water on it. Comes out this down, and it really, really makes sense. I promise when we put the black on the beak. Okie dokie. Now, sorry, I gotta move this so I can do the. This one's a little skinnier than that one down at the bottom. Subconsciously, I was trying to not make it as, as big as the other one, which looks kind of abnormal, but I promise I felt the same when I did them on the big one. It's like, man, this came out to be a fat flamingo, but it all worked out in the long run. So I got our feet here. So instead of a four, it's going to be a backwards four. I'm thinking I got that right. Let me put a knees on them. I'm going to take my, whoops, completely missed my water bowl. I'm going to take my, this is like one of my few tables I don't have paint all over it, too. Instead of paint, I got resin all over it, so I guess that makes up for it. And I'm going to do the little toes and the dew claw. Toes and dew claw. And there we go. So I'm going to dry some of these. I think this one's pretty dry. Lucky thing is, this dries really quick.
completely dry, but now I need to put the little stamen coming out of the out of the um, viscous. So that's that way I'm gonna do. I'll make it come down here. So it's gonna come down like that. Put some of that bright pink on here. It's Monday night. The place next door is having like dollar hamburgers. So that's, a, so that's loud over there. Okay, so this one, I'm going to have it come this way too. Huh. I'm going to come right here. And then we're going to put these little dots to be the, um, what is it? I mean, like, I guess this is the stamen, and it would be like the, um, I don't know, what do you call it? The part of the stamen. I don't know. So what I did is I got my big paintbrush, and it's got a nice flat bottom to it. And I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in the paint. And then I'm going to press it down. There we go. And you get a nice round little circle. You see that little right there? It does really good at making a, a dot. This might not be the best brush, so I'll see. Yeah, there we go. You have to do it thick, though. You have to really do it thick. See, sometimes it won't even press. Thick paint on there. Glob it on there. When I do my paint your pet class, this is always how we put the pupil on the dog. It's the only other time we use it, but it works great to put people on dog. I guess it would work great to put people on people, but how cute is that? Look at that little flower now. Isn't that stinking cute? Okay, how am I doing on this one down here? So if you take the... um. Get the pattern. And you can come back and watch the video to see how to paint it again. Or you can just say, I'm going to go to Tanya's and take it in person. That's completely fine with me. Okay, I'm going to clean the bottom of this paintbrush off. And now I'm going to come in with some black and do some touching up. And then I'm going to blow dry this all. And then we will move to the lettering. Oop, way too much paint. But this is Craft Smart brand, and it's very, very watery. So if you know, you know. Touch up this about for a minute. I've been doing so much. Um, artwork and procreate. I swear, I've a couple of times wanted to like double tap on my piece of artwork. How many times has somebody handed you something and you're like, I can't read it, and you do this on the piece of paper, like you're zooming it up? Don't act like you haven't done it. I know everybody's done. If you haven't, it, it's coming for you. You'll do it soon. So this this craft. Um, whatever brand this is, Craft Smart. Um, it's very thin, so sometimes you have to go over things a couple of times. But it's really good for just cleaning up the edges. 
I guess I dripped black paint right there. And then I just touched it. Okay. So I kind of fix that flower. Come down here, touch up this flower. Oh yeah, I was thinking that was the messed up one, but I turned it upside down. Now my bottom is the top. If possible, use your pinky to hold your hand steady. Make sure your paint's dry, because you don't want to do this and lean your whole hand into it. You want to you want to support your hand up, like holding your pinky up. And it really does work. Promise. I've been doing it for hundreds of years. Yes, I've been doing it. Okay, I just noticed what's up. It's when I pick the paint up off of there, it's so liquidy, it, I fling it when I use my brush. See, I just did right there. Instead of painting the second coat, I'm doing it kind of thick, which you probably really shouldn't be doing because I'm flinging black splotches everywhere. Or I could just get up and get a bit of black paint. And I just put my arm in a stamen. And that looks kind of pretty. Looks like I'm painting a rose on my hand. Okie dokie. I really need some music, but I know Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and everybody like tag you if you don't have copyright permission to have music playing in the background. So you better come to a Facebook Live. A lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of stuff to talk about. Okay, so I've touched up these. They look much better, don't you think? Now I'm going to take the black and I'm going to paint my, I'm actually going to switch to my tiniest brush. I have to really get into this right here. So I'm going to wash the brush off, take as much of that liquid out of it as possible. So I could just use the this to make the eye like I did in the other one, but I'm going to go ahead and just paint it on here. Okie doke. So that's the eye and the beak right there. You can see that. Do that on this one up here. This one's still a little wet right there. Hold on one second. Let me. Okay. So now we're going to put a little accents on some of these. So this one has, this one has a little black paint right there. Oh, it's a okay. So I'm just going to I know this part's kind of scary because you're coming over it with black. And then you're going to come in here 
This is the scary part. Top one's kind of wet, so let me dry it. It's just a little bit still wet. All these little places are full of paint. I'm gonna get paint up and do that. This afternoon, I was like, I'm gonna send everyone an email and remind them that I'm doing this because I'd said earlier I was going to do it. And then I got in a fight with MailChimp. And then I said, heck with this. I'm just going to the studio. I get all this finished while I'm at the studio. Well, then it took forever for my computer to reboot. <laughs> then I managed to get one short list of people emailed, the most recent people that had signed up for information. So that's all they got. The little notification was like, you know, on my short list of people that most recently contacted me. So I put it on Facebook. And um, so I know I didn't let a lot of people know I was doing this. So hopefully I'll start doing more Monday evening paintings since Monday's kind of the blah day. I really want to show you how cool it looks using the white. Using the, uh, how cool it's going to be using the white. Um, graphite paint. Okay, so we're gonna draw a little accent line down the middle of this, well, down the edge of this. And like, that's not even that good of a line, but that's okay. Have you ever been doing something and you're painting and you get the most perfect line with your paintbrush and it's just like this major crowning achievement for you? You're just, oh, I got the line. It looks so good. No, I have. <laughs> I get impressed with small things, I guess. Okay, okay so I'm going to do uh, the leaf here. So it's got one big center. Um, Line down the middle. I'm just going to accent. Okay, got that one done. Let's see, do this one. Swoop, swoop, swoop. It's kind 
skin. That's all we need. And we need this one down the middle. Okay, so let's back this up and let y'all take a look at this. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of pink on my brush because for this top one here, the flamingo, the tip of the beak is black and it's on black, so you can't really see it very well. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit and just... Okay, so that's all I did is right here. I just touched up so as you could see the beak. Okay, so let me back the camera up. I'm gonna lean this up so y'all can see that everything done but the uh, paint off the hands. Got everything done but the text. And um, oh no, I gotta accent the flamingos. Oh, we'll see that one. Forgot to do the accent lines on the flamingo. These are the most fun ones. Okay. Okay, so we'll do this one first. Kind of, you know, fun, lighthearted little lines here. And then we're going to put a little accent here. Maybe his little joint or whatever. That's the first little flamingo. And the second one. Let's see. Now, I just happened to do that right on the edge. That's not what you really need to do. You're just drawing little whimsical, make it kind of fun and lighthearted. And so, let's see. So, some feathers. And then I'm just going to do wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay. So now we're going to lean this against the wall. Let's take a look at it. I've got everything but the weathering. So, so, this took us about an hour to do. Let's take a look and pull the camera up. And you can see. So look how cute this came out. Isn't this adorable? So now we're gonna put the text in white on top. So what I did in this one is I actually outlined the text in uh, black. I wasn't planning, I wasn't part of the plan. It's just as I was doing it, I realized couldn't really see the white letters that much because I picked a more ornate and thin font than the one that was um, suggested. 
And I really do like that font, so I think it's going to look fine. And um, I think I see one little spot where I put a highlight because you kind of lose the stamen on that bottom. One, I'm put a little black highlight on that one. And then we'll dry it, and then we'll test out the lettering stuff. And so hopefully y'all can hang on with me while I'm doing it. We dry all this stuff off. And you have, if you're painting along with me, you did this all freehand. Congrats. Another reason you want this really dry before you start um, putting your lettering on is that you don't want to get any paint on your transfer paper because then they'll give you a spot that doesn't transfer the next time you use it. So that's really a good reason why you want to make sure everything is really dry, not almost dry. You know, not like you're going to paint a second color and you don't care if it's a little bit wet. You really want to make sure this is dry like really really dry because see if it's, it's a if you paint real thick you know you'll get this big old fat glob so make sure that's all dry and sometimes the surface will be dry but if you put pressure on it it'll pop like a i'm not gonna say like really. Okay, I think we're dry. So let me show you the transfer paper. And this, I think, is my sign. Okay. Let me see if I have some scissors so I can cut this down. So I, um, my husband hung up. My husband hung up some lights for me yesterday outside, and it took all day. And he got so sunburnt. And luckily, I have had the same bottle of 
aloe or sunburn. I think I've had that thing 25 years because I just always keep it in the fridge. It's just always in the fridge for when you burn yourself. And it's not even halfway used. And um, I, uh, I seldom you know, lay out in the sun. I mean, look at me. Hello. Even though I'm part Indian. I do not chance it. Okay, so I'm centering this. I put, oh, let me move the camera back down. I was thinking you were looking at that. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so I have all this lettering. I printed this out on the computer. And so I'm just going to space it pretty even. You can really measure this, but I'm kind of an eyeball person. So I'm just going to eyeball it and I'm going to measure it here. Eyeball it based on how much it overhangs the sheet, the, the board, the top and the bottom. I taped all these together. When I printed this, I did print um, what they call registration lines right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little, um, it's a little cross. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my painter's tape. Make sure this is dry up here. I'm going to tape it down up here. And I'm going to tape it down, down here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up. I have never used my graphite paper before, so I have a bit of a learning curve. So let's see. It even came with a little, um, little stencil. I forgot what you call it. But stencil. I don't know. I do not know. These are skinny wood sheets. I was going to tape them together, but they're just skinny. You can feel which side has got the material on it. So I'm just going to slide. I'm just going to trace it and then just slide it down. I don't need to tape two hundred or take five of these together for any reason. And luckily, this is about the same size as the paper that I printed on, so I should be able to just. Line it up and make sure I've got it. I can actually see through the paper and see where I've, I've got it right under it. And um, oh. So I'll do W E and then I'll slide that piece down. I actually have a had some of these I bought. They have some of these at the dollar store too. Burnish is it a burnisher for burnishing? Okay, let's go. I'm going to try to stick to the outside edge of the design because I made it a wide um, outline, a two-point outline, so it would be thicker of a letter, so I want to trace as far on the outside as I can. These are good, you know, I know people are used to using like pencils, but you really, like I used to use a um, dead ballpoint pen, And we're painting this over in white, so it's quite all right. And I'm going to paint it right up to the edge. Or if we missed a, the edge a little bit, it's okay. Let me touch it up. Now, how do you know if you've already done that line or not? 
you can feel the groove in the paper. You can kind of see it, but you can just put your finger where you started. And then you know, you made it. So I'm just gonna slide this down. If it sticks, you probably got it in some wet paint. So that's one good thing about buying them in the, just the little eight by 10 sheets is that if you mess one up, you know, it doesn't really ruin the whole, the whole sheet. Cause the, the graphite ones I have are huge. They're like 18 by 24, if not bigger than that. And so when I did the first one, I used the graphite paper and you see the background is a lot of black. So it was kind of hard finding where I, um, where my line was. And so I just had to like hold the, I had my phone on, um, on a flashlight so I could just see um, where it kind of listened, you know, or had that sheen of graphite. Sorry about that. I knocked the table and something fell out the bottom. I know I'm going to have to find more interesting stuff to talk about while I do these videos. So I do have to take Sassy to the vet school in a couple of weeks. I think I might see if I can move my appointment to the med vet just because I think the vet school, which I love, we've used them numerous times. We've spent lots of money there with four dogs and um, they've been great. But I think that they have to just start the whole process over again. Like I have already got all these tests run by my vet and paid a lot to have it done. And uh, vet school is just going to do all those tests all over again. So it's like just repeat it. It's kind of crazy to me. Okay. Um, loving the white graphite. Oh my God. So what I did last time is I hung this sheet up against the wall so I could just refer to it if I needed it. Just, you know, if I got lost, it was like, where's the flower? Where did, where the honor? So take a look. Can you see the, let me see if I'll turn it this way. Can you see the letters? It's very light, but I can totally see. See any of them? Yeah, you can see some of it. Okay. So that looks great. So much better than it did when I did the big one. So let me get some white paint out here. And I am going to get started. And um, I know this part might be kind of boring to watch. So I don't know what to tell you. I can't play any music. I don't want to sing to everybody. So we're just going to have to power through. Power through, power through. We can do it. Definitely get all the water off your paint because you do not want to have, I mean, off of your brush. You do not want to add any more water to the white craft paint. Now, if you were using, you know, titanium white by Liquitex or something like that, that's a different story. 
you can add a little water to it. But if you add water to this, it's just going to make it start bleeding, and we don't want to do that. So, wish me luck. I really should put my glasses on. And this is a good time to really exercise that using the edge of the brush for a straight line. A little hard, it's a little hard to see down here. And so you can thicken the lines up all you want. You know, if you think your font is a little too skinny. Yeah. Nobody really knows unless they're in the class with you or got the same thing. Nobody really knows what font you chose. You can add to it all you want. I don't know what my dog is doing over there, but she is making some noise. Hey, Sassy, you want to come say hey to everybody? Here, Sassy. W down. Here she comes. Come here, Sassy. Here, Sassy. Yeah. Sassy. Does anyone else's dog roll around on their back while um, trying to scratch the back? Of messaging back because my phone is up in the tripod thingy. Tripod thingy. Technical term. Now, and this is why I put the piece I just take, took off of here on the wall because sometimes, even though it transferred really good, I might like, oh, did I get to do the top of the wall? So then I no, but I should just, you know, add on the bottom. And always look where the bottom is to see kind of have a plan. Sometimes you can just look the curve. There's just nothing better in the world than getting one perfect brush stroke, right? Where you need it. That sound crazy. And there she goes, rolling on the floor again, scratching her back. I don't even think that would work. So I have a herniated disc in my neck, and I don't know what I did, but I I really pissed it off this week. And my shoulder has been killing me. And uh, I had to do a live, I mean, I had to do a um moderate a training for my day job and the beginning of it I'm just sitting there with my shoulder not paying attention to the fact that on the video 
Sydney and Robert Marshall, uh, and I'm losing the O, so I've got it on the wall, so I can get it That's there. You can always touch these up if you feel like you have to, but I really think just coming back with a little black on the edge really helps. And I did have a black paint pen that I went through that whole thing with, and um, I just really didn't, didn't like it, and so I went back with paint. But on the other hand, the surface of that was a little more rough than this. So I might can get away with using a black paint pen. And I actually, I was just going to like put a little highlight line on the side, kind of like we did like right here and here. And um, I was just going to do a little highlight, but it ended up, I just ended up starting to paint the, um, all the way around it. And it ended up looking pretty good. I mean, if you get up close, it's not. Like I said, not like graphic design work, but see, I think you're really almost two thirds of the way done when you when you get to the lettering. I always kind of think the lettering is halfway, but I don't think it's. I think it's farther along. It's under the lettering is pretty good. Now, if this were a class. This will probably be a three hour class just because I know people are perfectionists. I try to tell everybody, nobody knows what the template looks like. My dog is pretty, y'all. You hear about the hair? Exactly. I'm crazy. One more letter. So, anyway, um, don't forget this Friday. Depending on when you're watching this video, but this Friday, May 6th, yeah, Friday, May 6th, um, is the Hot Art Cool Night. I'm talking 2022, in case this, you know, y'all are watching this 100 years after I've passed away. Still trying to figure out, still want to paint the flamingo door, uh, fortunately. 2022. We're gonna have a band. We're next door to a bar. And um, what more could you want? Art, music, and alcohol. There's also a CBD place on the corner. And they're gonna be open too. And I actually just found out that they're open till 10 o'clock at night. And I think on the weekends, even later, I didn't know there was that late of a rush to buy um, CBD stuff, but. I mean, I know people use CBD stuff. I don't mean that. I just mean at 11 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night. Okay. So, I think I got this pretty good. Might need to touch up a couple spots. White does tend to be a lot thicker. I think actually, I'm wrong, that's quite really thicker. It usually has more pigment in it than other colors. So it covers really well. Maybe just as watery, which I don't really think it is, but it just covers the eyes. You know, if you don't have gesso, just paint the canvas with the white paint. It's not the same as gesso. Gesso has um, a different formulation in it got more clay in it. And now I'll show you what this looks like before we put the um, the black outline around it. All right. Here we go. 
What you think? Does the Okay, there we are back. So you see, y'all, it is pretty white. I mean, that looks good. I think that looks good. But I do think I need a little black around the edge. Um, just because it kind of gets lost there in the in the hibiscus. And it's funny, looking at it on the camera, it looks a lot better than it does for me looking at it here. So maybe I'm just going to leave it like this. I think it does look pretty good. Um, and then I'll, I'll live with this for a little while and see what I think I need to do. And um, and if I like it, I'll leave it. If not, I'll just go ahead and outline it and um, show it to you. But um, I think it looks pretty good. And um, it was an hour and a half painting. I know it's a long time to watch a live, but thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching this in the replay, thank you so much for coming and watching it. Um, if you're watching this live, come back a little later and I'll have all the links to everything in the description and you can get the free um, the free tracers. And so they're going to look something like this that you can print out. And then I'll actually put a link to the um, paper that I bought. That way, if you need to get some tracing paper, you can. Now, look, the cheapest thing I found, I mean, the smallest pack I found was like, 50 sheets. So you might do better going to like um, Hobby Lobby or Michael's because um, this was, but it was cheap still. It was cheap for 50 sheets. I mean, six bucks maybe. I don't think you're going to get one sheet any cheaper at Michael's or Hobby Lobby because it's probably going to be a huge sheet. So I went ahead and got the big pack because I know I'm probably going to get some that are going to get kind of ruined with paint on them. Um, from people that didn't dry, dry off of the thing. But thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully I'll see some of y'all at the um, Hot Art Cool Nights. And just tell me if you come in and you watch this video, just say, hey, I watched your Facebook Live and I'll give you a hug. Okay, I'm going to close everything out. So thank you very much for, for attending and I will see you guys later.